Please. Don't shake the light bulb. Hey guys, uh, welcome to a small tutorial on how to create, apply, and share assembly patch files. Now, to give a brief explanation on what assembly patch files are, it's they are, as the name implies, patch files. What you're doing when you create a patch file is you're taking a modified map, comparing the data that's been modified with a vanilla map, and then have an assembly create a patch file out of that. That is significantly smaller than a map file would be, because it only represents the changes made in the modded file. These patch files are generally very useful because, as I said, they are very small compared to a full-size map file and as such they're very easy to share. But for some reason it's, they don't really get a lot of attention uh, versus people sharing massive map files that could eat into a data, a data cap and so on and so forth. So, just for the sake of the tutorial, what we're going to do first is we're going to open up Forge World although it can be any map and we're just going to make a change just any change so let's take the fault in and give it a scorpion turret instead of a it's normal one the campaign fault in obviously because it's in fault mode now so I've just saved it it's got scorpion cannon uh, let's do another thing let's give the ray for scorpion cannon as well might as well so the map's modified, right? We've modified the falcon, we've modified the wraith. Now, all we could do is we could take this forge halo, it's still the same size because there's not been any new information added, but what we're going to do, what we could do is we could share it directly. <laughs> My friend does team. Uh, yeah, we could do this, we could take this entire map file and send it, put it on Mega, put it on the Nexus, Mediafire, so on and so forth, and share it that way. But, like, that's, it's a fi almost 500 megabyte map file, it's not something that you want to be, you know, uploading or even downloading, depending on, you know, your, the intricacies of your internet access, whether you have a data trap, whether your upload speed is slow, whether your download speed is slow. For some, it's alright. I mean, me, I've got upload in the twenties, and I do, it's not the best, but it doesn't take too long. But for some, be some people in the f like fives or tens or you know whatever. So it's it's not ideal, uh, especially when you start adding things like rejected shotgun weapons, ultimate forge world, uh, the AI forge world maps, and so on. As you're getting up in the data. As you're adding more stuff to the maps, if the, if the map files become 900 megabyte a terabyte, and so on, it's, it's not ideal by any means. So the alternative, which requires a small amount of effort but nothing severe, is to create a patch file. And to do so, what, you're, what we're going to do is we're going to run the tools, map patcher, and we'll come up to the screen here, it's a new tab. We have the create patch option, apply patch option, import patch option. Create and apply are exactly as the sound. You're creating the patch and you're applying the patch. And port patch is what's used if you want if there's map file if there's modifications that can be ported in real time, then you can create a patch and have people give it to people to be able to make those changes in real time. It's not something I've ever really used though. But we're going to go to the create patch. So, it will ask us for our file pass. Right? So, we're going to want uh, an unmodified map. You will need a vanilla map to roll on with this, which you should, if you're, modif if you're making mods, you should have a vanilla map folder like this. And we're going to take the vanilla map and select it. It will ask us for a modified map, so the one that we've just modified, which is in our default maps folder, Forge Halo dot map, and it will ask us where we want to save our output patch. Now I'm just going to name this one, and the extension is ASMP. 
and we'll write it save. Then it will ask us for details. Now these ones here, as far as I know, do need to need to be filled in with something. I'm just going to put the, like, the number one in each one, or that or two in that case. Uh, I've asked us for a required file name. It's for when you're saving, but you can just in, you can set it to whatever, and it'll pop up a box saying it's different. But you can ignore it anyway. We don't need a preview image. Obviously, the target game is the Master Chief Collection, but if you're on console, you could use other games as well. And this custom BLF slash map info. It's just a remnant from the console days where you could add entirely new map entries to the game just by having info files. It doesn't work for the Master Chief Collection, so we can ignore that for just completely. And we'll just repress create patch. Yeah, creates a patch. And if we go to our reach folder, we'll see it's got one. And the file is actually one kilobyte in size because the modifications we've made is, are so small. Right? So, what we'll do is we're going to delete Forge Halo from here, the modified map. And what we'll do is we'll go to Apply Patch now. Now, once again, file passed. So, we're going to choose the patch, which for us is 1.asmp. We're going to select our vanilla map again. Oops. Vanilla map for Halo, and we're going to set the location to where we're going to save the modified map, which is back in our maps folder. Save. And then we're going to press apply patch. It creates the map with the modifications in it. If we go back into maps, there we go, for Halo. I'll close that up now. So, what we'll do is we'll reopen the map just to prove that it's been patched and we'll also open up the vanilla file just to show that it was already it was not modified previously so scrubbing cannons there we go to the left it'll be the same what we'll do is we'll open content file go to vanilla maps for channel and we'll just show that you know the vanilla maps folder is completely unmodified already which has, right? So that's what it's like for maps that don't add new information. Obviously, the more things you modify on the map, the better it will be. So just say you remove the map barriers, you change all the projectiles, and that those it will be a, a megabyte or maybe at most maybe. But what if you want a tar inject tar injected assets in your map? So we'll delete the modified map. And in here I've got this file here. Now this one has a, if I remember correctly, a tar injected pelican and the spirit and so on and so forth for Forge World. And so what we'll do is we're going to apply that to a map and we'll see the very the difference. Now as you can see, it's a hundred and eleven megabyte. That's because when assembly compares the maps it takes any information that's new or changed and puts it in the patch file to then be patched in any so that also includes actual tags now as you can see there's actually a rocket pod pelican tag here that I've that I made and it's 300 megabyte but that's because when you extract the tag it actually extracts all information relating to that tag all of it which can include other vehicle tags, other but even biped tags, so on and so forth. That might not even that you might not even think would be related. But seeing as the map might already have some of that data in it, not all data that's injected. Sounds, for instance, don't get injected. And as such, when you create a batch file, it's literally only the new information and changed information that gets recorded, which is why the file size is much smaller. So once again we'll go to map patcher, we'll go to apply patch, patch to apply, we'll go out and go to tutorial, patch tester.asmp, we'll take our vanilla map and we'll take our location to save it, which is maps. Now if you look here, because the patch file that this patch file that I created 
had the required name of a uh, forge under slash hail modded it or to create it with that file so I'll set it for that already you can completely ignore that though and just set the name to whatever you want although I don't really recommend it most of the time press apply now the patch they say the patch suggests to use forge hail modded but we'll just ignore it and just press ok anyway it won't matter It'll take you a bit longer because it's adding you a bit later to the map. Okay. Go back out. We'll go to our map so and as you can see, we've got a new a new map and it's actually 600 megabyte in size. A fair bit bigger than the original map. Now, one th one very important thing to note when you're patching maps. you have to use vanilla maps if you try and apply a patch to an already modified map file it will just completely corrupt it right what you what i believe you could you could do is create a patch from a modified file well take a modified file mod it more, create a patch with that modified ma map file as the, the pre-modified map file as a base but and then apply it to that same modified file but that's complex and it's risky and not worth the hassle all you really need to know is if you try and apply a patch to an already modified map it will corrupt it it will corrupt it completely. It will just completely ruin it and if you don't have a backup then you're going to have to validate your files and it's your shit out of luck. But other than that, it's a far superior, far 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 superior way to share maps, modified maps and just mods in general. Because it's not a hard process. Hopefully it will be people more people will start to do this because let's say some people don't have the fastest internet, some people do have data caps. So right constantly downloading five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred, so on and so forth megabyte map files, it isn't feasible. And as such community does need to go on this hopefully this video might help push a little bit but that entirely depends on the reach but yeah this is it's just been a small tutorial on how to create a map a map patch a patch file for assembly and how to apply it if you liked this video if you if it's if you found it informative if it's helped you Please uh, like the video, maybe even subscribe, and if you need any help, please don't hesitate to comment on my, on the video, or on any of my videos for that matter. I should, as more Halo games and as more uh, updates assembly are made, make more tutorials, but that really depends entirely on how things grow in the future. But yeah, that's it. If you like it, please like and subscribe if, if you need help please give me a comment